Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is Madas Maths Synoptic Paper C, which is accessible for all pure exam boards, and it's really tricky. So give it a go, and if you find it useful, please do like, subscribe, and share. Let's get into the maths. Let's do it. Question one, seats in a theatre are rated to rows. The number of seats in the theatre form terms of an arithmetic series. Okay. Um, the 6th row has 23 seats and the 15th row has 50 seats. So the formula for an arithmetic sequence is um, the nth term is equal to a plus n minus 1d. So we can form two equations using this information. The 6th row has 23 seats, so 23 is equal to a plus 6 minus 1 is 5d. And the 15th row has 50 seats, so 50 is equal to A plus 15th row minus 1 is 14. Great, we can subtract the two equations. Um, I can subtract upwards to get 27. The A's cancel, and this gives me 9D. So D is equal to 3. Um, if D is equal to 3, then we can sub back into, uh, let's say, 23 is equal to A plus 5 times D, which is 15. Take 15 away from 23, and that gives me that A is equal to 8. So that is the answer to part A. Part B, it says the theatre has 20 rows in of seats in total. Okay, so work out the total number of seats. So we have to use the summation formula, which is as follows. And we want to add up the 20 rows. So 20 is n. 2 times the first term is 8, plus 20 minus 1 is 19 times by 3. So that goes into our calculator. Uh, 20 over 2 is 10 multiplied by 16 is 2 times 8 plus 57 is 9 times 3 and we get 730 question 2 it says use integration by parts to find this um, integral here um, so let's do that Let's set um, u equal to x and dv by dx equal to cos of a half x. Differentiate this to get du by dx is equal to 1 and integrate this. Um, the derivative is a half, so divide by a half is the same as times u by 2 and cos integrates to sine. Okay, great. So the integral is equal to u times v, which is 2x sine a half x, minus the integral of du by dx times v, which is just going to be 2 sine of a half x dx. Okay, so once all we need to do now is just to integrate um, this. So um, a half x inside the brackets, derivative of that is a half. So dividing by a half is the same as timesing by 2. So I'm going to get 4. Sine x integrates to minus cos x. So there's going to be an extra minus there to turn that into a plus. And that will be cos of a half x plus c. Okay, next it's asking me to integrate um, this x squared sine a half x so I can set u is equal to x squared dv by dx is equal to sine of a half x and du by dx is equal to 2x and integrate that is going to give me um, minus 2 cos of a half x so the integral which we need to calculate will be u times v, which is going to be minus 2x squared cos a half x, minus the integral of du multiplied by 
V, which will be um, minus 4x cos of a half x dx. Okay, so I can write this as minus 2x squared cos of a half x. And two minuses there make a plus, and I can take a 4 outside of the integral. Like that. And we've already worked out this integral. That was part A. So the answer to it was this. So we can just replace that in there. So I get minus 2x squared cos of a half x. And timesing by 4, I'm going to get plus 8x sine of a half x. Times it by 4 again, I'm going to get plus 16 cos of a half x plus c. Perfect. Okay, question 3, and we've got some coordinates and a picture of a nice dam. Uh, blah, de, blah, de, blah. It says find the length of AD. Okay, so AD, I've got two coordinates there, so just going to work out the, uh, the length by doing Pythagoras. So um, the length or the magnitude of AD is equal to the square root of the gap between the x's, which is 9 and 18, so 9, and the gap between the y's, which is 40 and 0, so 40. So it's just 9 squared plus 40 squared. And that is a Pythagorean triple, and that's equal to 41. Um, show the angle... Uh, ADB is approximately 0 0.44 radians. Okay, so that is this angle in here. And to work that out, I would draw a line across the top there. I know this side length is 41, and that one is as well by symmetry. And I know this distance here is the gap between the x's, because the y's are the same. So that gap is 18. So I just need to use cosine rule to find out this angle. Okay, so using the cosine rule, cosine of the angle, let's call it theta, is equal to uh, 41 squared plus 41 squared minus 18 squared, all over 2 times 41 times 41. So I go to my calculator and I do... 41 squared plus 41 squared minus 18 squared all over 2 times 41 times 41. I press equals and I need to go shift set up and change my uh, calculator to uh, radians. And then I go shift cos answer equals and there it is. Perfect. So <laughs> therefore theta is equal to exactly what they ask. Sounds good to me. Okay, part C. It says, hence determines the nearest meter squared, the cross-sectional area of the dam. Okay, so we have, um, uh, these are triangles, and the vertical height goes from zero up to 40, and the base is 18 along. This is exactly the same by symmetry. And this is a sector, so we will use a half r squared theta. Okay, so let's do that. So we have one half times by 40 times by 18, of which there are two triangles, plus the sector, which is one half times by the radius, which is 41 squared, multiplied by the angle, which is 0 0.4426. Okay, great. So let's uh, take that number, times it by 41 squared, times it by a half. So that gives me the sector. And let's take these, um, uh, so half and two, they will cancel, so 720. So let's add these two together. And it looks to me like we get... 1092 meters squared. Perfect. Question number four. Um, substitution. 
uh, I've never differentiate a square root when I'm trying to use substitution. I would always uh, square out. I find it much easier. And that gives me this. And then I can differentiate with respect to x. This will be implicit. So I differentiate with respect to t, but then I multiply it by dt by dx. And this one, differentiate with respect to x, gives you minus 3x squared. I would then um, multiply across um, like so. And I want to get an expression for dx. So I will divide through like such. Lovely. Um, next, I am going to... No, I think that's good, actually. I think we can just go straight into substitution now. Um, I've got x to the 5. And I have the square root of 1 minus uh, x cubed, which is t. And then I have dx, which is um, 2t uh, dt over uh, minus 3x squared. Okay, so the uh, x squared will cancel with the x to the 5 to leave me with x to the 3. This will be 2t squared dt over uh, minus 3. And x cubed, we know from up here, is um, 1 minus t squared. So it's 1 minus t squared times by 2 over, sorry, 2t squared over minus 3 dt. Okay, great. So I will take out a minus 2 thirds and I will multiply out the brackets at the same time to get t squared minus t to the 4 dt. Okay. Okay, then we integrate, so we up the power to um, 3 and divide by the new power. Then we up the power to 5 and divide by the new power. Uh, we don't need the integral sign anymore. And we write plus C. Okay, great. Um, now we would like to take out a factor, because I can see here the answer is over 45. So if I take out a 15th, I will get um, dividing by 45 outside. And this will cancel the third, and we need to multiply through by 5. And this will cancel the fifth, and we need to multiply through by 3. Okay, right, let's get some more space. And let's have a look what they are asking for. Um, okay, well... First off, what we can do is we can take out a factor of t cubed. And that leaves me with uh, 5 minus 3t squared. Now, t cubed um, is... Well, we know that t is equal to... One, uh, the square root of 1 minus x cubed. So therefore t cubed is equal to 1 minus x cubed to the power of 3 over 2 because t is to the power of a half. So cubing will times the power by 3 so it becomes 3 over 2. Okay, so this is 1 minus x cubed to the power of 3 over 2. And then here we have 5 minus uh, 3t squared. Well, t squared is uh, 1 minus x cubed. So this is minus 3 lots of 1 minus x cubed. Okay, so we're looking good now. So this is going to be 1 minus x cubed to the power of 3 over 2. And here we're going to have 5 minus 3, which is 2. 
and we're going to have minus 3 times minus x cubed, which is plus 3x cubed, plus c. And I think that is what they asked for, all by written in a different order. But it is exactly the same expression, so I'm happy. Job done. Question five, and we have a curve, and we have a rectangle, and we are asked to show that the two areas R and S are equal, and we know that point C is the point zero one. So this is, uh, sorry, one zero. And therefore we can work out point B, because the X coordinate is one. So the Y coordinate is one plus E to the two times one is two. And now we know the width of the rectangle is 1, and we know the height of the rectangle is 1 plus e to the power 2. So we can write that r plus s is equal to 1 multiplied by 1 plus e to the power 2, which is equal to 1 plus e to the power 2. And r is the region below the curve, so we can find that using integration. So I can integrate between 1 and 0, 1 plus e to the power of 2x dx. And this gives me x plus a half e to the 2x. I can sub in my limits and I get 1 plus a half e to the 2. Minus when I sub in 0, I get 0 plus a half because e to the 0 is 1. So overall, I'm going to get 1 minus a half, which is a half, and I'm going to get a half e to the power of 2. Okay, great. Um, so I can use this uh, r plus s is equal to 1 plus e to the power of 2. I can sub in for r, which is a half plus a half e to the power of 2, so plus s is equal to 1 plus e to the power of 2. Minusing all over to that side gives me that s is equal to a half plus a half e to the power of 2. So therefore we have proved that r and s are the same. So r is equal to s. Job done. Question 6, we've got a geometric progression. And we um, know the first term is this. And the sum to infinity is this. Find the sum of the first five terms. Okay, so we know that A is equal to 1,200, and we also know that the sum to infinity is equal to 1,600, and we also know that's equal to A over 1 minus R. So 1,600 is equal to 1,200 over 1 minus R. So 1 minus r is equal to 1200 over 1600, which is equal to 3 over 4. So if 1 minus r is equal to 3 over 4, then r must equal 1 over 4. And we're asked to find the sum of the first five terms. So the sum of the first five terms, well the formula for the sum is a 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So the sum to the first five terms is the first term, open brackets, 1 minus the ratio to the power of 5, all over 1 minus the ratio. So that's a calculator job. Hit the fraction button first, 1200, 1 minus um, uh, 0 0.25 to the power of 5, all over 1 minus 0 0.25. Okay, we get, uh, does it say to any, de no, it doesn't say to any degree of accuracy, so we'll just write the whole thing down, and that is 1598.4375. Okay, fantastic. So underline that. The nth term of the progression is denoted by un. Evaluate the sum. 
Okay, so they are asking from all the way up to infinity starting at 6. Now we know what the sum is all the way up to infinity. Uh, so this is just adding up all of the sums up to infinity but starting at the 6th term. So we don't need to include u1, u2, u3, u4 and u5. They're not included. Everything else is. And we actually know what the first five terms are. We've already worked that out. So the answer to part B is the sum to infinity, which is 1600, minus the sum of the first five terms, which we've already worked out. So we just do that calculation, 1600 minus last answer, and we get 1.5625. Question seven, we've got one modulus graph and we've got a second modulus graph and we're asked to sketch them on the same axis indicating the coordinates of any intercepts. Okay, so I will draw a coordinate axis like such and x minus one. Well, what I'll do is I would just draw the graph of x minus one normally which would go through uh, at minus one and at one and then I will rebound it off the x-axis like such and then get rid of the bit below so if it previously crossed at minus one then it was reflected over it means it will cross at one okay so that's the graph of x minus one modulus and then um, 2x plus one so again, I'll just draw the graph normally. Um, so 2x plus 1 goes through uh, the y-intercept of 1, and it has a gradient of 2. So it's going to be steeper line, something like that. And then it gets rebounded off the bottom there. So it looks like that. And that is the modulus of 2x plus 1. Okay, um, and where does it cross the x-axis? Well, when y equals zero, so therefore x is equal to minus um, a half. So that is minus one half right there. And I think that is good. Okay, and x says hence solve the inequality. Okay, um, where the graph of 2x plus one, so the green one is greater than or equal to the purple one. Well, the green one is on top of the purple one here and here. So we're going to need to find those intersection points. Um, first off, I know they intersect at x equals 0. And I can test that just by subbing in x equals 0. I get 1 on this side, and I get minus 1, which modulus to make 1 on that side. So I know that x equals 0 is a solution. Let's find the other solution. And that will happen when one of the graphs um, has been... Uh, rebounded um, sorry no it will happen when both of the graphs have been rebounded so all I need to do is just solve when they are equal to each other like this I get 1x is equal to minus 2 so x equals minus 2 is the other solution okay now let's put it in an inequality form so I know that this is the set of x where x is greater than zero, union with x less than minus two, or equal to, because the uh, inequality is a greater than or equal to sign. Okay, question eight, we have a curve, and we have um, a tangent to the curve, where x equals two, crosses the coordinate axis at the points a and b, and work out the ang the area of the triangle. Okay, so tangent to the curve means I need to differentiate. So let's go dy by dx. Um, differentiating this e function here, I take the derivative of the input, which will be 2, and I multiply that by the quarter, so that gives me a half. And that's e to the input that stays the same, so 2x minus 3. And... Um, next, I will need to differentiate minus 4 ln a half x. Well, a ln of a half x 
is exactly the same as ln of a half plus ln of x by log rules. And ln of a half is a constant. So when I differentiate this, the constant goes to 0, and ln x differentiates to 1 over x. Um, but we've also got a minus 4 here, so we times by minus 4, so it's minus 4 over x. OK, great. So that is differentiated, and I want to work out the gradient where x equals 2. So dy by dx at the point 2 is equal to 1 half e to the 4 minus 3 is just e to the 1. And uh, 4 over 2 is just 2. OK, great. So that is the... Um, that's the gradient. Now, in order for me to work out the equation of a line, I will need to sub the x value into the y function to get a value for y. So y is equal to um, 1 quarter e to the 4 minus 3, which is just 1, so e to the 1. And then here I have um, ln of a half times 2 is 1, so ln of 1 is 0, so that term there goes to 0. OK, great. So I've got enough to work out equation of the straight line. So I have the gradient, I have a y-coordinate with a corresponding x-coordinate. So the equation of a straight line is y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. OK, and then I'm going to expand these brackets. And I'm going to get a half e x. I'm going to get minus e. I'm going to get minus 2x. And I'm going to get plus 4. OK. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to work out when um, it crosses the x-axis by setting y equal to 0. And that gives me minus a quarter e is equal to, I will collect up the x's and factorise, so a half e and minus 2. And then I also have minus e and plus 4. OK, so I will um, add e to that side, which gives me 3 quarters e. And I'll take away 4. And then I will divide through. Like so. Yeah. And this will give you my x value. OK. And then what I will do is I will work out the value for y when x equals 0. So I will get y minus a quarter e is equal to minus e and plus 4. So y is equal to minus 3 quarters e plus 4. So we have the x intercept and the y intercept. So what we'll do now is to work out the area of the triangle AOB. We will just multiply these two together and then divide by 2. Because we'll have the x and the y intercept. So the triangle will be those two values and then halved. OK, um, let's take the x and let's first off multiply top and bottom through by 4. So that gives me 3e e minus 4, uh, sorry, minus 16, over 2e minus 8. And then we're going to half that. And we're also going to times it by um, this. Let me write this as a single fraction. So we're going to have minus 3e plus 16 all over 4. So this is minus 3e plus 16 
all over 4. OK, let's just remind ourselves what form they want it in. OK, so 16 minus e, minus 3e on top. So what I will do is I will um, look at this and I will times it top and bottom by minus 1, which will flip the signs over on top and it will also flip the signs over on the bottom. So now we have this and this gives us our 16 minus 3e e all squared on top and on the bottom we will have uh, 2 times 8 times 4 is 64 and 2 times 2 times 4 is 16. So we can write this as 16 minus 3e squared all over. I can take out a 16 here, so I have 4 minus e on the bottom, as required. Point, question 9, a point lies on the curve with this equation. The gradient is 6 over 5. Determine the possible coordinates of p. OK, so gradient means differentiate. I'm going to differentiate implicitly. So I'm going to get 3y squared. And then whenever you differentiate a y function with respect to x, you have to multiply it by dy by dx. Minus 2y dy by dx. And the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Um, next, we can collect up the dy by dx's and factorize. And we can also replace that e to the x with a y cubed minus y squared. So this is going to give me dy by dx is equal to y cubed minus y squared all over 3y squared minus 2y. And we can divide through by y to get y squared minus y all over 3y minus 2. And we are told we want to investigate the point where that is equal to 6 over 5. So cross multiplying is going to give me 5y squared minus 5y is equal to 18y minus 12. Collecting everything to one side is going to give me uh, this equal to 0. And we can factorize that. And that will be 20 and 3, so 4, so minus 3 and minus 4. I believe that's right. Yep, that's good. So y is equal to 3 over 5, and y is equal to 4. OK, now it asks us for the coordinates of p. So we'll need to sub that back in to find the x-coordinate. And if I take the natural log of both sides, then x is equal to the natural log of y cubed minus y squared. So here, x is equal to um, it was um, it was y cubed minus y squared. That gives you a negative, so we can't take a natural log of a negative. So therefore, this is not a viable solution. And the other one would have been um, 4 cubed is 64 minus 16, so 48. So x is equal to the natural logarithm of 48, which is fine. So therefore, that is my coordinates of p.
like that. Perfect. Okay, for question 10, I'm not sure if this is a mistake. I think it is a mistake because it says that the curve meets the axis there, but it's drawn there. So I think we're going to go with what's drawn on the uh, graph. And um, it says sketch f of x. Okay, so f of 2x is a, uh, is a compression by a scale factor of a half. So um, the, if I want to inverse that, I need to stretch it by a scale factor of 2. So the new graph would look like this and it's going to go through 12 0 um, and it only affects the x-coordinate so this is going to stay the same so it's just a stretch in the x-axis and that's that question done and then it says next sketch on a separate diagram the graph of f of uh, 4x minus 1 um, so what we'll do is we'll start with f of x like this and then what we'll do is we will replace x with x minus 1 and that will give us f of x minus 1 and then what we'll do is we'll replace x again with 4x and this will give us f of uh, 4x minus 1 um, so what we're doing is we're transforming the x coordinates by minusing 1 to it and then we're multiplying it by 4. So what will happen when I sketch this? Um, well, it's going to have the same shape, of course. Uh, and the x-coordinate was at um, was at 12, 0. And, and when I do f of x minus 1, that's a translation to the right by 1. So it turns into 13, 0. And then when I do x uh, f of uh, 4x, that compresses the graph by a scale factor of 4. So the x coordinate is reduced by a scale factor of 4. So the new coordinate is 13 over 4, 0. Now, we might consider doing it the other way around um, uh, but when you're working inside the bracket like this it, you kind of do the opposite of, of what you'd expect so you do the opposite of bid mass uh, and you do the uh, translation horizontally first and then you do the stretching afterwards uh, if you were to do it the other way around it would look like this so x would go to 4x um, which means you would have f of 4x um, but then the next translation would be changing, um, um, it would be replacing x with x minus a quarter. And that way we get f of 4 x minus a quarter, which is what we actually need, which is f of 4 x minus 1. So this would mean that I would... Um, stretch first and by a scale factor of a quarter um, so that would change the 12 into um, 3 0 and then I would have to um, add uh, a quarter or shift the graph to the right quarter which would then give me 3 and 1 quarter which is the same as 13 over 4 Okay, question 11, I've got a running track inside a stadium and we've got two semicircles and a rectangular section. The total length of the track is 400 meters and encloses an area of A meters squared. By obtaining and manipulating expressions for the total length of the track and the area enclosed by the track, show that the area is equal to this. Okay, so um, first off, let's look at the area and this part is X multiplied by 2R. So it's 2xr. And the um, we've got two semicircles here. So essentially you've got semicircle one, semicircle two, and those 
are going to have an area of a half pi r squared. So both of them together, it's going to be a full circle, so it will be pi r squared. So that's the total area. And the perimeter is equal to um, x plus x and then plus one circumference of a full circle. So the perimeter is equal to 2x plus um, 2 pi r. And we're told that's equal to 400 meters. Okay, so now I need to work out an expression for a. Um, and I'm going to do that down here. So the area we said was uh, 2xr plus pi r squared. And the perimeter was 400 and it was equal to 2x plus 2 pi r. I want my area to be in terms of r only. So I need to work out an expression for x using the uh, circumference over here. First of all, I'll divide through by 2. And then I'll subtract over the pi r. And I get an expression for x, which can then be replaced over here. So this gives me two lots of rx, where x is 200 minus pi r, plus pi r squared. Expanding out, I'm going to get 400r minus 2 pi r squared plus pi r squared. So I'm going to get 400r minus pi r squared as required. Okay. Um, in order to hold field events safely, it is required for the area enclosed by the track to be as large as possible. Determine by differentiation an exact value for R for which A is stationary. Okay, so dA by dR is equal to 400 minus 2 pi R. And it's stationary when the gradient is equal to 0, or the derivative is equal to 0. So we get 2 pi r is equal to 400. So r is equal to 200 over pi. Part C. Show that the value of r found in part B gives the maximum value of A. Okay, so to, to, to classify stationary points, we will use the second derivative test. So we differentiate again. In this case, we will get uh, 400 all is a constant, cancel, so we just get minus 2 pi. Um, and that is a negative, and therefore we have a maximum value. Uh, if the second derivative is negative at the point, it's a maximum. If it's positive at the point, it's a minimum. Okay, part uh, D. Uh, show further that the maximum area enclosed by the track is this. Okay, so what we'll need to do is substitute in to the area formula. And the area formula is um, 400R minus pi r squared so it's 400 and r is 200 over pi minus pi times by 200 over pi squared okay um, so this is going to be 80,000 over pi minus 40,000 over pi and that's equal to 40,000 over pi sounds good okay part e the calculations for maximizing the area of the field within the track are shown to a mathematician 
The mathematician agrees that the calculations are correct, but feels but he feels the resulting shape of the track might not be suitable. Explain by calculations the mathematicals re Sorry, explain by cal by calculations the mathematician's reasoning. Well, if you were maximizing the, the area of this shape, you the maximum you would get would be a circle. And that will happen because um, we'll be able to show that the um, uh, if we if we look at the actual condition, so the only actual condition we're told is that the, the track has to be a total of 400 meters. So that's the perimeter. So if I were to sub in that value of um, x, or sorry, that value for r in, I would get that the perimeter is equal to 2 um, x plus 2 pi, and this is 200 over pi is equal to 400. So I get 2x plus uh, pi's cancel, and that's 400 equals 400. So x is equal to 0. So this is a circle, essentially, um, which I don't think, I'm not, I've not, not seen an athletics track that looks like a circle before. So probably not a good idea. Question 12, we have a circle, and it says determine the coordinates of the center of the circle and the size of the radius. Okay, so classic uh, question. We just do completing the square, and then take away 10 squared, plus the y value is minus two, so half that minus one, then take away um, minus one, uh, take away one squared, plus 52 equals zero. Great, this gives me x plus 10 all squared plus y minus 1 all squared um, minus 100 minus 1 plus 52 is minus 49. So add 49 to both sides and I get the equation of a circle in this form which tells me that the center is at minus 10, 1 and the radius is the square root of 49, which is seven. Okay, great. Uh, a different circle has this particular center and a radius of 10, and point P lies on C1 and Q lies on C2. Determine the minimum distance of P and Q. Okay, so a quick sketch just to um, uh, see what we're dealing with here. We've got this center, which is at minus 10, uh, one. And we have a circle looks like that. And then we've got this center, which is at 14, 8, which is like all the way over here. And that has a radius of 10, so slightly bigger. Maybe it looks something like that. And we need to find the minimum distance. So to find the minimum distance, I would draw a line connecting them. And I would work out the length of that orange line. Um, which is the difference in the x coordinates, which is 24, and the difference in the y coordinates, which is 7, squared and added together, then square rooted, and that equals 25. So that orange line is 25, and I also know that the purple line, um, or the circle, the purple circle, uh, has a radius of 7 and the green circle has a radius of 10 so this distance which is the shortest distance between two points on either of the circles is 25 minus 10 minus 7 which is 8 Okay, question 13, we have a cubic and a quadratic, and we're asked to sketch them on separate axes. Um, okay, a bit strange, but whatever. Um, X minus 7 means we have a root at positive 7. Just factorise this part here, which means we have a root at negative 3 and positive 1. And the constant term will be minus 7 times minus 3, which is positive 21. It's a positive cubic, so we started now at the bottom, now we're here. 
down here at the bottom, and, and there we are at the top. And here we have a quadratic, which I could draw like this. And that goes through here at positive 7 as well. And negative um, 5 over 2. And that's a negative quadratic, because uh, there's, a, there's a minus uh, x here, which when times by the 2x is going to give you a negative x squared. So this one also started at the bottom, and then it ends at the bottom. And that one, the um, constant term is 35. Great. And let me just write on the coordinates. Beautiful. Okay, it says, hence, um, find an exact form, uh, where appropriate, the free solutions of the following equation. Um, okay, so that equation is just the two graphs equaling each other. Uh, I'm not sure why it says hence, but I think that's probably because we've shown that they both cross at 7. So 7 is definitely a factor of... Um, well, it's a solution to this equation basically um, right so what I can do is I can do x minus 7 um, x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to and I can times this part by negative 1 and this part by negative 1 and thus I've not actually done anything uh, I haven't changed it at all because two negatives make uh, just one so but what I have done is it means I could write it like this, and I could write this as x minus 7. And that's going to be handy because then I can um, just simply divide through by x minus 7. And of course, I will need to write that x equals 7 is a solution if I were to do that. And then I could just write x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to minus 2x minus 5. x squared plus 4x um, plus 2 equals 0. Um, x plus 2 all squared minus 2 squared plus 2 equals 0. So x plus 2 all squared minus 2 equals 0. So x plus 2 all squared is equal to plus or minus root 2. Uh, sorry, when I, I moved the 2 over and I've square rooted. So x is now for equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. So those are our three solutions. Okay, question number 14, and we've got two graphs, and we're asked to work out where they meet, but we only need to work out the y coordinate, so we need to eliminate the x's. Okay, so I will start by rearranging the one on the right, and I can write that as, well, e to the x plus 1 is equal to e to the x times e to the 1, so I can write that as e to the x times e to the 1. And e to the x minus 1 is equal to e to the x times e to the minus 1. So I can write that as plus e to the x times 1 over e. And I can work out what e to the x is um, by using the first equation. So I can write 3 e to the x is equal to 2 minus y. So e to the x is equal to 2 minus y over 3. I can sub that in over here. So I get 2 minus y over 3 times e. And I get 2 minus y over 3 times 1 over e. OK. Um, I can multiply uh, both sides by 3 which gives me 2 minus y e plus 2 minus y times 1 over e
And I can also multiply through by E. And I can multiply this out. I'm going to get 2E times by the next E. So that's 2E squared minus Y E squared plus 2 minus Y. Okay, great. Now I can collect up all the Y's on the left hand side. So I get plus Y E squared and plus Y. Then all the terms without a Y on the right hand side, like so. And then I can take out a factor over here. So 3e plus e squared plus 1. And then I'm good to just divide. And when I do so, I get y is equal to, I'll put them in order. So 2e squared plus 3e plus 2 all over e squared plus 3e plus 1. And I believe that's the correct answer. Yes, it is. Okay, um, it says use trigonometric algebra to solve this equation. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get rid of um, uh, the sine uh, by doing arc sine of both sides. So if I do arc sine of both sides, then that will cancel the sine on this side. So that will leave me with arc sine a quarter plus arc cos of x is equal to arc sine of 1. Now arc sine of 1 um, we can work out because where the sine graph is 1 that occurs at pi over 2 and every plus or minus 2 pi thereafter uh, but we'll just focus on the principal value of pi over 2. So this gives me arc sine of a quarter plus arc cos of x is equal to pi over 2. Then I can rearrange for uh, arc cos, because after all I'm trying to solve for x. Uh, so I get this. Uh, as arc sine of um, a quarter and then I can take cos of both sides which will cancel the arc cos and leave me with just x and here I will get cos of pi over 2 minus arc sine of a quarter. This is a compound angle formula which I can expand out so I will get cos a times cos of b And then it's minus plus, which means I swap the sine over. And then it's sine A times by sine B. So we get this. Okay, um, cos of pi over 2 equals 0. So this will cancel. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So times by 1 um, is just leave it the same. And then sine of arc sine, well, sine and arc sine cancel out, and that will just leave me with a quarter. So x equals a quarter. Question 16, we have a graph, and it is split over two parts of a domain. And it says that the function is continuous. Okay, so if it is continuous, then it means that it has the same value at the split point, which is 2. So that basically means that if I sub in x equals 2 to either of these two, we should get the same value. They should equal each other. So we can say that a 2 cubed plus 2 will equal b 2 squared minus 2. So that's 8a plus 2 is equal to 4b minus 2. So we have that um, 8a minus 4b is equal to minus 4. So 2a minus b is equal to minus 1. Because the function is smooth, it means that at the point x equals 2, 
the gradient will be exactly the same. Um, a non-smooth function might look something like this, where at x equals 2 the values are the same, but you can tell it's not smooth, it's jagged because the gradient is not the same on either side of the point. Okay, so we're going to differentiate the function, uh, so we're going to get 3ax squared, and that's going to equal the other part of the function differentiated, which is 2bx. We're going to sub in x equals 2, which is going to give me 12a is equal to 4b, and we're going to divide by 4, so I'm going to get 3a is equal to b. And then I can uh, sub in. I can sub b for 3a over here. So I get 2a minus 3a equals minus 1. So minus a equals minus 1, so a equals 1. And if a equals 1, then that means b must equal 3. Question 17, and we've got uh, simultaneous logarithms. So I can see that most of them are in base um, 2. So let's convert the others into base 2. So let's look at log base 8 of x, y. And let's say that equals, I don't know, capital N. Then what that means is, is that 8 to the power of capital N is equal to x, y. And 8 we know is 2 to the 3. So we can write this. So we can write that 2 to the 3n is equal to xy. And then writing that as a logarithm, that tells me that log the base is 2, xy is equal to 3n. So the capital N is equal to log base 2, xy over 3. OK. So, with that, I can now rewrite my top equation, number 1, as three lots of n, which is log base 2 xy over 3. So that just becomes log base 2 of xy, is equal to um, 4 log 2 of x. Now, another log rule is that I can take the coefficient and raise it to the power. So that gives me log base 2 xy is equal to log base 2 x to the 4. And that's that's my first equation then. So that's xy is equal to x to the 4. OK, great. Now let's look at the, um, the second equation. And the second equation is going to give me um, log base 2 of y is equal to uh, 1 in base 2 will be log 2 of 2 because 2 to the power of 1 gives you 2 plus log base 2 of x we can then um, add those two on that side and when we add logs, we can write it as a single logarithm multiplied together, so 2x. So this gives me my next equation, which is that y is equal to 2x. Okay, great. So I've got y, xy is equal to x to the 4, and I have y is equal to 2x. So this one we can divide through by x. Oh no, that, that's not the best way of doing it, sorry. Let's just substitute in. Uh, so x and y is 2x is equal to x to the 4. So that gives me 2x squared is equal to x to the 4. Set that equal to 0. Factorize, so I get x equals 0, or x equals um, root 2, or x equals minus root 2. 
and the corresponding y values are twice the x values by using this one here so I get y equals 0 y equals 2 root 2 y equals minus 2 root 2 and then finally we need a sense check do all of these solutions work well straight off the bat we can't have um, a log of 0 so these ones need to be ruled out and we can't have log of a negative number either so these need to be ruled out so this is the only solution question 18 and we are asked to um, uh, find a b and c for this identity so I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by t t squared plus 1 and that will give me 1 is equal to a t plus b would be multiplied by t plus c lots of t squared plus 1. Okay, we can do a substitution to eliminate um, a part of these. So I can do, I can say let t equal uh, 0. And this will give me 1 is equal to, this first bracket will go to 0 because we're timesing it by t, which is 0. And this bracket, I'll get t squared is 0 squared plus 1, so I'll just get 1c. So I'll get c is equal to 1. And I can't sub in another t value to eliminate now. So instead, I'm just going to have to compare coefficients. So I'll write 1 is equal to a t squared plus b t. We know c is 1, so I get plus t squared plus 1. OK, um, I can uh, subtract 1 from both sides. like this and hopefully now it's obvious to see that um, if I compare the t squareds um, I've got 1t squared and I've got a t squared and they have to equal 0 so therefore a must equal minus 1 and again the t's must equal 0 and there's only b of them so b must equal 0 okay great uh, so I've done that, I've found A, B, and C. Okay, part B. It says find the general solution to the differential equation. Um, so I'll need to rearrange this first. So I will divide both sides by M. And I'll times both sides by DT. So I'll get this and then I'm going to integrate that. So let's integrate that then. So I'll be integrating 1 over m dm is equal to the integral of 1 over t t squared plus 1 dt. And we can write this using the identity at the start of the question and that is that the integral is minus t over t squared plus 1 plus 1 over t dt and now we can integrate the left side which will give me ln m and the right side well first off what I could do is I could take out a minus sign outside the bracket there and split the integrals up and the derivative of the denominator is 2t. So ideally I'd want it to be 2t on top. But in order for that to happen, I would have to take out a factor of a half to keep it equal. Now I can integrate directly because the numerator's derivative is, uh, sorry, the denominator's derivative is the numerator. So this is going to give me minus a half ln of t squared plus 1 plus here we're going to get ln t and because all three of my terms are in terms of ln I will write my constant in terms of ln as well. Ok 
Okay, now I can collect up my lens. Um, the positive ones are T and K, so they will go on the top of my fraction. And the negative one is T squared plus 1, but it has a half in front of it, which can be raised to the power. And to the power of a half is the same as square rooting. So the square root of T squared plus 1. Okay, great. Uh, now I can remove the lens. So I get m is equal to kt all over the square root of t squared plus 1. And that is my general solution. Uh, the next part of the question says, uh, two minutes after the reaction started, the mass produced is 10 grams. So that means that t equals 2, m equals 10. So I can sub that in. Um, and then afterwards, I will need to calculate um, the mass after a further two minutes, so when t equals 4. OK, so part C, I'm going to sub in m is 10 and t is 2. So I get 2k over the square root of 4 plus 1 is 5. OK, so that tells me that 5 root 5 is equal to k. OK, so I've now got a new equation for m, which is 5 root 5 t over t squared plus 1. And when t is 4, which is what we've been asked to evaluate, I will get that m is equal to uh, 20, because 4 times 5 is 20, root 5, over... Uh, root 17. Okay, great. And because this is a modelling question, we would want to give that as uh, a decimal. So I'll just put that into my calculator. And that is 10.8. Okay, uh, part D. Determine in exact third form the maximum mass that will ever be produced by this chemical reaction. Okay, so let's look at the formula. And also note that um, it started out uh, at 10 and it was gone up to 10.8. So as the time increases, the mass increases. So um, we need to check to see what happens when uh, T tends to infinity. And when t tends to infinity, um, t over t squared plus 1 rooted tends to t over the square root of t squared, which tends to t over t, which tends to 1. And if that tends to 1, then it means that m will tend to... Um, well, 5 root 5, because that's what's multiplied by t over the square root of t squared plus 1. Question 19, we have a curve, and we have points P and Q. We know these points. And we also know that this angle is right-angled. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the gradient of PQ. So we'll get that by doing the change in the Y. So we'll do 3 minus 6 over 0 minus minus 1, which is minus 3 over 1, which is minus 3. OK. Um, and next, we know what the gradient of QR is. So m of qr, because it's 90 degrees difference between them, is a negative reciprocal, which is one third. Um, so the line qr, the line qr um, has gradient of a, of a third, and we also know it passes through q, so we know what the y-intercept is, it's just three. So the line is y equals minus a third x plus 3. Okay, and what we're asked to find are the exact coordinates of r, 
which is where the line QR, which we've worked out, and this quadratic intersect. So we set them equal to each other. So the quadratic is this. Um, so we say that x squared minus 2x plus 3 is equal to 1 third x plus 3. Um, and this is going to give me that x squared minus 2x is equal to 1 third x. Uh, multiplying everything 3 by 3 gives me 3x squared minus 6x equals x. So 3x squared minus 7x equals 0. So let's take out an x. And therefore we get that x is equal to 7 over 3. Uh, of course we also have x equals 0, but we know that is definitely the point q. And it asks us to determine the exact coordinates of r, so we need to substitute back in to one of the equations to get the y coordinate. So the y coordinate is one third lots of the x coordinate plus 3. So that's one third times 7 thirds plus 3. And we get 39. Oh, sorry, 34 over 9. Okay, so just finishing off, R is the point 7, 3, 34 over 9. Bosh. Question 20, we have this function for a to the x plus b, and we ask to find a and b given that uh, this bit of information. Okay, let's use the blue bit of information first. And this tells me that when I sub in two thirds, that will give me four to the two thirds a plus b is equal to one quarter and then the cube root of four. So let's work out what that is. So one, cube, one quarter is four to the minus one times by one, uh, four cube rooted is four to the third. So that's the same as 4 to the add the powers minus 2 thirds. So that's equal to 4 to the minus 2 thirds. Okay, so because they're both bases are the same, it means that 2 thirds a plus b must equal minus 2 thirds. Uh, times it through by 3 gives me 2a plus 3b is equal to minus 2. Okay, that's one um, equation formed. Let's form the other one using the second bit of information. So this tells me if I sub in 4, um, so if I sub in 3 over 2, I get 4, 3 over 2, uh, A, plus B, is equal to, and let's have a little look at this. So. We have uh, 1 half, which is uh, 2 to the uh, minus 1, times by root 2, which is 2 to the half. So that's equal to 2 to the minus half. And 2 is the square root of 4. So I could write 2 as 4 to the half, and then to the minus a half. It's going to give me the same thing uh, because once again 2 is 4 to the half and then we raise it to the minus a half. So this is equal to 4 then distributing the powers multiplying them to the minus a quarter. Okay great so once again the powers the bases are the same so we can equate the powers. Uh, minus a quarter times through by 4 gives me 6a plus 4b is equal to minus 1 and then it's just a case of solving these simultaneously uh, let's times this one over here by 3 to get 6a plus 9b is equal to minus 6 
and let's write this one over here belief it and then subtract them which gives me 5b is equal to minus 6 plus 1 is minus 5 so b is equal to minus 1 and then subbing into the easiest one which I think I'll use this one here gives me 2a 3 times minus 1 is minus 3 is equal to minus 2 so 2a is equal to 1 so a is equal to a half Bosh. okay question 21 we've got this beautiful looking suspension bridge and we are told that they have parametric equations show clearly that dy by dx is equal to cot t right so I will write um, dy by dx is equal to dy by dt over dx by dt differentiating the y function uh, will give me when I multiply it out I will get 6 minus 6 cos 2t 6 differentiates to 0 minus cos cos to sign change to sign differentiates to plus the 2 comes out times by the 6 so 12 so plus 12 sine 2t and then I will differentiate the x when I multiply out this will give me this 12t differentiates to 12 and minus sine differentiates to minus cos and the 2 comes out times by the 6 to get 12 so minus 12 cos 2t okay great let's divide through by 12 and then let's expand using double angles so sine is 2 cos times sine 1 minus cos 2t well you can convert cos 2t into quite a few in this case I'm going to use um, 1 minus 2 sine squared t and I'm going to do that because um, that's going to cancel my 1 I've got 1 here so I want to take away 1 here so that the 1's cancel out and I just have a trig function on the bottom so this is going to give me 2 cos t sine t over 2 sine squared t and this is going to simplify down we're going to cancel a sine on top and bottom we're going to cancel a 2 on top and bottom so I'm just going to be left with cos t over sine t which is cot t as required great part b find the exact in exact form the length of or let's just check the diagram again okay so or is from here to here and these are the endpoints of the domain so when t is 0 and when t is pi and we want to sub those into the x coordinate in order to get um, well yeah the x coordinate so when I sub in 0 I get um, well 0 obviously you can tell that it's at the origin uh, so I need to find r so when I sub in pi I'm going to get uh, 12 pi minus um, sine of 2 pi is just 0 so it's just going to be 12 pi okay so part B the answer is um, the distance between O and R is equal to 12 pi okay part C determine the maximum height of the arc well again looking at the diagram the maximum height by symmetry is in the middle and that's where the t will equal halfway in the domain so that'll be pi over 2 so subbing in pi over 2 to the y to get the height I will have 6 minus um, 6 lots of cos of pi 
and this will give me 6 minus 6 and cos of pi is minus 1 so that's going to equal 12 so the height is 12 okay question D uh, we've got the arc design uh, blah de blah, blah so all that information is on the diagram and the angle is as well and it says that um, uh, that find the value of t at b by considering the gradient at the point. Okay, so let's um, look at b and let's also look at this triangle um, which has the same gradient at b. So if this triangle has an angle of uh, pi over 6, um, then we know that it must have uh, it must be in this particular ratio. So pi over 6 is 30, uh, which means that you have 1 there and you have root 3 there. Um, because tan of pi over 6 is equal to 1 over root 3, so the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, um, so that is the gradient at the point B because the, the the triangle, the straight line, has the same gradient, so it's tangent at the point B. Okay, so we need to set the gradient, which we know is cot T, equal to 1 over root 3, which means that tan T is a reciprocal of cot T, will equal root 3, which means that T will equal pi over 3. So that is the t value at the point B. And it says find in exact form the length of the straight line AD. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this working here. And we are going to find the... Um, we're going to inspect the point B. B first and we are going to look at that triangle again which has pi over 6 in the corner and we know that at the point B we have t is equal to pi over 3 so we can sub that in for the y so that will be 6 minus 6 cos of two lots of pi over 3. So that's 9. So the height of that triangle is 9, which means I can then work out um, a to p uh, by just using simple Sokotoa, with this being the adjacent and 9 being the opposite, which means that if I do the opposite divided by tan of the angle, then I will get the adjacent, which is 9 root 3. Okay, so from here to here, we have 9 root 3. And now I can also work out uh, from here to here, which is going to be helpful, because that purple distance is whatever the x coordinate is when t is equal to 3. So I can sub that in to my x equation down the bottom. So it's 12 lots of pi over 3 minus 6 sine 2 pi over 3. Okay, that doesn't give me an exact form, but we don't need to panic because what we'll do is we will just write this down as 12 pi over 3 is the same as 4 pi. So that's that part. And then we'll get rid of that. And that's minus 3 root 3. So there's the exact form. Okay, that means I can work out this bit here, this green bit because that will be the blue bit minus the uh, purple bit. Which 
which will be a total of 12 root 3 minus 4 pi. Okay, um, so I think I'm good to go now because I already know this light blue bit from earlier, that was 12 pi. And by symmetry, we have two lots of this green bit. So my overall distance for AD is 12 pi plus two lots of the green bit. So it's 12 pi plus two times by, and the green bit was 12 root three minus four pi. So that's going to give me uh, take away eight pi, so four pi plus 24 root three. Okay, question 22. And we have uh, this funky looking triangle and we're asked to express h in terms of theta and x in terms of h show that x plus y is equal to blah de blah de blah. Okay, so we're just going to be using Sokotoa here. And first off, I'll start by looking at um, what h is in terms of, uh, well, let's look at this, this triangle here and let's do um, sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse and cos of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So sine of theta is equal to h and cos of theta is equal to y. Okay, great. Um, let's look now at the other triangle and we have h and x there. So that's the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So I'll do tan of the angle, which is pi over six, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And tan of pi over six is one over root three. And that's equal to h, which we've already shown is sine theta over x. So cross multiplying gives me x is equal to root three sine theta. Okay, great. So all I need now is just this one and this one. And I think that is pretty good. We can write that, um, that yeah, x plus y is equal to root three sine theta plus cos theta. Okay, perfect. Oh. Hence deduce that the area of the triangle AB is given as sine theta multiplied by sine theta plus pi uh, sixth. Okay. So the area of the triangle is of course the uh, base, which is x plus y, times by the height, which is h. And again, h is this. So it is sine theta multiplied by x plus y, which is this. So I'll write that a bit lower down here. So the area is equal to one half of the um, uh, the base, which was uh, root three sine theta plus cos theta, multiplied by the height, which was sine theta. Now the bracket there, I can convert into r sine theta plus alpha. So in order to do that, because I'm converting into sine, I would want my a uh, value to be the sine coefficient. a is equal to root three, and b would equal to the cos coefficient, which is one. So r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, which will be three plus one, which is uh, two. And then alpha is tan to the minus one of uh, b over a. So this will be pi over six. So I can write this as one half of two lots of sine theta plus pi over six multiplied by sine theta. 
and this is what they've asked for which is written like this great okay it says by using trigonometric identities for cos theta plus theta plus pi over 6 and the same but the minus for an simplified expression for the area Okay, so um, let's expand these using the double angle formula. Um, sorry, not double angle, or well, compound angle. So with cos, you get cos, cos, and then minus sine, sine. So it'll be cos theta, cos theta plus pi over 6 minus sine theta sine theta plus pi over 6 okay and that one was equal to the first one we've just done which I could also write as cos of 2 theta plus pi over 6 when I expand out this little mini bracket in here so that's equal to cos of 2 theta plus pi over 6. And then I can expand the second one, which has a minus sign there, which means that I will just have a plus sign when I do the compound angle. And when I actually um, expand these mini brackets here, I will get theta minus theta, which is just 0 theta, and I'll get minus pi over 6. So I'll write cos theta cos theta plus pi over 6 plus sine theta sine theta plus pi over 6 is equal to cos of minus pi over 6. So I'm going to subtract the two equations and I'm going to subtract upwards and this will cancel with this they're the same i'm going to get sine or oh, blah 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 well in fact this is the area so i'm going to get let's call it a so i'm going to get one a minus minus another a so that's going to give me two lots of the area is equal to cos of pi um, over six cos of negative pi over six uh, root three over two great so that's root 3 over 2 and then minus cos of 2 pi plus pi over 6 Oof. divide through by 2 I'm going to get root 3 over 4 minus 1 half of cos 2 pi plus pi over 6 and that's my simplified formula for the area And then part C, it says by using part B, deduce the maximum value of the area of the triangle. Uh, I'll deduce that it is this, and this occurs at that uh, that theta value. Great. Okay, so the maximum occurs um, when, well, because the cosine function here is negative, then the maximum will occur when the cosine function is minus 1. Uh, because the two minuses will make a plus and they'll maximize the area. Uh, so max A when cosine 2 pi plus, sorry, 2 theta plus pi over 6 equals minus 1. So that is the case. We will have root 3 over 4 plus 1 half, which is the same as 1 quarter root 3 plus 2. And when does this occur? Well, if I look at this equation here and I do the inverse of cosine, I will get 2 pi plus pi over 6 and cosine uh, arc cos of minus 1 is just pi. So I get 2 theta is equal to uh, take off a 
uh, six pi is going to give me five six pi. So finally, dividing through by two gives me five pi over twelve. And we are done. If you found that useful, please do subscribe to the channel, like and share. Bye for now.